This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whomever you are and whatever is happening on your journey of life, it is God who welcomes you here today, and so do we. We are so very, very glad that you are here. And those of you who are worshiping with us at home, we're so glad that you are able to join us, and we invite you to fully participate and also to have whatever you need on hand so that you can experience Holy Communion with us, God coming to us in bread and wine. I want to thank you for your ongoing support, all of you, everyone here. My goodness, what an active group of people. <laughs> we want to thank you all for your ongoing support for the mission and ministries of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. We're going to continue now with our mission statement. We invite you to say this clearly and with conviction. We ready? There we go. Celebrating God's love and forgiveness, we serve others. And we're going to continue for now with having a more uh, sitting down approach. You'll give me feedback on how that's working for you. Apparently some people like this. All right, so we will remain seated for our opening hymn this Holy Trinity Sunday. Come thou almighty King. <laughs> and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, and whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned we have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. 
God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in, in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. So I have an envelope, and in this envelope, there's a letter that I received in the mail. So the mail lady is in charge of uh, spreading what? Anybody knows? Yeah, what is she in charge of spreading what? Mail, letters, and all those kinds of stuff. And who do they go to? People, exactly, so they go to you. And when they send those things, it's to either notify you that you need to pay a bill or you received a birthday letter from someone far or you received an invitation. But what if we didn't have that? Yeah, no correspondence. What if we didn't have that? We wouldn't know anything, right? So we wouldn't know exactly when it's someone's birthday, when we have to pay our bill, when we have to pay our car, or when we have to pay uh, our plates. So now I have a question for you guys. Did you guys know that just like the mailman lady, God gave us a job? Does anybody know what job he gave us? Anybody? Spread the news, yeah! So exactly, that's the job that God gave us. Just like the mailman lady, he told us to spread the news. So he told the disciples one day, he went and he said, before he descended, he said he wanted to turn, he wanted to go and tell everyone to spread the news. So exactly what he meant was to make churches, to tell everybody about Christ, to spread the gospel, and also to love one another. So that was our job, and yes, she got it right. Our job was to spread the news just like the mailman lady. If the mailman lady doesn't have that job, then we won't know anything. And if we don't spread the news like God told us to do that job, they won't know about God, they won't know about these churches, and they won't know the most important thing, which is about Jesus. So remember, don't forget your job. Don't forget, don't forget what, what God told you to do. Spread the word. Spread our church out there. Tell us that there's a church. So that is our one major job. And we are so blessed that we got that job, right? It's wonderful. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pray for today, guys. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day. Thank you for telling us to spread the news. It's the most wonderful thing we can do. It's our number one job, and we all love it. Thank you for having the kids here, for having Elsa here. Take care of them, take care of their family, and take care of everyone who is here. In the name of Jesus, amen. A reading for this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The eighth Psalm is a reading and response. O Lord, our, o Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. 
You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them with little less than divine, with glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, fish and sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw them, they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Well, welcome, my friends, to Holy Trinity Sunday. This is the Sunday always preceding Pentecost. And Holy Trinity Sunday, that's a good way to say everything in the kitchen sink, right? Right? What are you not going to include when you include Holy Trinity Sunday? But everyone cautions the preacher not to try to explain the Trinity on this day. Awesome philosophical argument. We can talk about it later. No, no, no. Let's get down to what really matters today. Instead, to draw people into what is the mystery of God. And perhaps even more importantly, to talk about how the Trinity reveals themselves to you in your everyday life. The passages today are not so much proof that we can argue that perhaps something like the early church understood what the Trinity was. Instead, passages like this are examples of encountering the Creator, Father, Mother, for there are many passages which describe the Creator as a mother, Savior, the 100% God, 100% human part of the Trinity, the one who knows every human emotion. The one who knows frailty and grief, pain, death, understands longing and hunger, rejection, cruelty, fear. Those emotions and things that we would consider an untouchable God to be immune to, our God is not immune to those human emotions. Our God has experienced them. And of course, the Holy Spirit, the one we celebrated last Sunday, the one who comes to us in mysterious ways, that breath of God and the spark of God, which is within you. And even though these are the words given to us to describe God, we know that this must even limit the eminence of God, describing it in these three parts. 
But my friends, what does any of that mean if it doesn't apply to your life? What does any of all of this about the Trinity and how grand and wonderful and diverse, etc., the Trinity is, what does that matter if it doesn't come to the broken parts of your life, the hurting parts, even the missing parts? It matters not at all. It doesn't make a difference unless it comes to the parts in my life that are not working, that are broken, that are beyond my ability to respond to, the parts where I definitely need help. So the point of Holy Trinity Sunday is to show you and spend time contemplating this, that God the Creator, God the Savior, and God the Spirit are relevant to your life. And they want to be present. They want to guide, comfort, advocate, assist you in very, very real ways. And my friends, if what we are doing here at St. Mark's does not have real life impact, if it doesn't change people's lives for the better, if it does not show, demonstrate, live, and believe that our God is real, then let's get rid of it. We do not have time for things that are not very real and relevant and life-changing. I don't have time. I know how busy we are here. We only have time for what is real. And my friends, the Trinity and the impact of the Trinity in your life is very, very real. So today, instead of focusing on the Great Commission, go and make disciples, we will instead focus on the psalm. The psalm, I believe, beautifully shows us from the time of the ancients that indeed God has deemed us worthy of God's attention. Consider, when I consider the heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have created, why do you even care about us, God? Why do you even pay attention to us, God? And yet, the psalmist writes thousands of years ago, you have made us just a little less than God, and you have crowned us with glory and honor. My friends, it is the psalm today that reminds us the Trinity is present and wants to be active in your life. In other words, consider this. You have a whole posse of friends in your corner. You have an incredible legal team. You have a mentor, a guide, a friend who is with you to the end of the age, who wants to help you, who wants to come into those parts that are broken. If if, if you, I, we will let them in. If we will listen with everything we have to that still small voice within, prodding us, guiding us in one direction and not stop until that voice is satisfied, it is the voice of the Holy Spirit or when wise people around us keep giving us same advice again and again, we need to listen. That is the voice of God. You'll know it's God, my friends, when, even though it's difficult, it comes with a feeling of peace. You know it's God. So this stellar team, your team, wants to see good happen in your life and wants to heal and bring wholeness to us here and make what we do here relevant, real, life-changing. Now, my friends, we here at St. Mark's are very busy. Have you noticed that? <laughs> I look around this room and there is not a person who doesn't have a job. I know that very, very well. Sometimes it feels like a log jam of opportunities. I felt that way, I think, since I walked in, and I know before I came here, you were all working that hard. I'm very, very aware of that. 
And I want to say thank you for your support for the vision that we have here of what St. Mark's is and will continue to be attracting people to what is real so they can encounter the living God. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. But my friends, did you know that this Holy Trinity wants to show up for you in ways that are so real, wants to guide, mentor, lead, shepherd, be the one we follow, not the one we lead. I sometimes get that confused in my head and wants us to be able to give not from the dregs of our energy, not from the last drops, but from what overflows. Can I have that next slide, please? This is the analogy that I would love us to have, that holy trinity. Remember the creator, the one who created creativity. <laughs> the one who says, you got a boundary or a barrier in your way? That is not a barrier for me. Watch me leap right over that and show you how. The savior, the one who jumps into the shark tank with you and gets you out, that is a savior, a very real savior. And the Holy Spirit, the guide, the prompter, the advocate, the energizer. Filling us so full that we are able to give not from the cup, but from what overfills into the saucer. To give from the saucer, not the cup, my friends. For fun and for free because God has filled us so full that we have the overflow to give. That is how the Trinity wants us to live and be. I don't know that we feel that way right now. We're getting tired. But it is the Holy Trinity that will provide us the right amount of work, the right amount of rest. And that rest can be fulfilling. It can be healthy relationships and fun and forgiveness and reconnecting with people and dealing with unresolved grief so that we can have this overflow of life and love. That is what the Trinity wants for us. And my friends, I'll go back to say this many, many times, that God is either everything or God is nothing. And we say, we claim, we believe that God is everything, everything. Let this Holy Spirit come and fill you. The other thing the Holy Spirit continues to do is to mend the cracks that are within us. We are not here only to serve. When we are filling with the Holy Spirit, with God, the Creator, with the Savior, we will notice that God will prompt us towards healing activities for ourselves. Again, mended relationships, forgiveness, dealing with things that we have put off for forever, things that we know that are sitting there perhaps on the back burner but need our attention, there is enough energy and time and ability within the Trinity filling you that those things can be dealt with as well. Every single one of us, as we are here to serve the community and tell people about Jesus, what Jesus has done in our lives, every single one of us comes as a wounded, broken person ourselves. But it is Jesus who fills in those cracks. It is the Creator, the Spirit, Jesus. They don't care which one you pray to. Pray to them all. Pray to one. It doesn't matter. They're all one. Fills in the cracks so that the cup can be filled, so that it can overflow. I don't like to waste time. I want to make sure we get a chance to ask the Trinity in. So here's what I'm going to do with you today. I'm going to ask that you would Think of the thing in your life that is causing the most pain right now. You don't have to name it out loud. Think of it. What is causing the greatest pain? Now I want you to lift that with me to the Trinity and pray, Father, Son, Spirit, take this thing, heal it, Bring restoration. 
forgiveness, guidance. I give it to you. Completely, Holy Trinity, I give it to you. Now watch and see what that incredible team, Father, Son, and Spirit, do in your life. Listen for the promptings within, listen for the promptings without. And in the meantime, my dear friends, this incredible team that we have here, fill your cup. Even though we're busy, fill your cup. Good relationships, fun, activities that bring you joy and happiness. That is showing and proving your trust in this Trinity. That you can be filled and filled to overflowing. If you need to talk to me, you know how to find me. Amen. We invite you now to remain seated as we sing a beautiful song about the Trinity. Come join the dance of Trinity. You'll recognize the tune. I hope that the words are fun and enjoyable for you. We 
we continue this Holy Trinity Sunday with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Open your hearts and join me in the prayers of intercession. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call to the church to make disciples of all nations. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel and direct all the baptized into lives of humble service. We pray especially for Pastor Alicia in her upcoming ordination. Surround her with your all-encompassing love and guidance. God, in your mercy. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence, any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick especially the recipients of our prayer quilt, Scott Flatgard. Let us also pray for Gary Sandy, Stephen Cox, and Reverend Richard Vivia, and Pastor Alicia, and we offered continued prayers for Lottie, Frank, Helga, Phyllis, Mick, Chris, Ruby, Chris, Manuel, and all the families of St. Mark's. God, in your mercy. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. We pray for your blessing on our children and youth ministry. VBS and Lutheran Social Services, Project Hand, and our Prayer Quilt Ministry, that they may continue to help and that those they reach may be blessed. Hear God in your mercy. God in your mercy. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer, those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. We pray for a hedge of protection around our police and fire department and all they serve. May they work and serve in according to your will. God in your mercy. Here, other prayers may be offered either out loud or silently in your heart. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Today we bring before you Scott, who is in grief. We pray that you will be him, encompass him with your love, peace, strength, and courage after the death of his mother. Lord, meet him in that time of grief, and please let him know that it is you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are you. peace of Jesus Christ be with you always. We invite you now to share that peace, that divine holy peace with one another. Peace be with you. Those of you at home, we invite you to share the peace of Christ with anyone around you or to raise your hand and blessing in the direction of someone that needs God's peace and pray God's peace upon them. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. For Thanksgiving moment, I just want to say that being here on campus yesterday, oh my goodness, there was not a quiet corner to be found. It was so active. Thank you all for your help and thank you for your support. Uh, it was uh, weeding and digging and weed blowing and organ music and music in here and uh, children from the, um, the Korean church uh, learning not only Korean but the gospel stories together downstairs on the lower level. The activity was just bustling here and I think oh my goodness what a joy to be a part of a congregation that is open and welcoming including and active there's probably other things going on that I wasn't even aware of maybe quilting was happening I'm not sure but it was active all morning long in every quadrant and um, it just gives such joy so my thanks today is thanks to all of you so thank you We are part of what God is doing in this time and in this place. So thank you for your ongoing support. We are partners in ministry with Jesus. Wow, think about that. Okay, thank you for your offering. of love you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table receive our lives and the gifts we offer abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child jesus christ amen The Lord be with you, and with you too. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to God. Give thanks to the Lord, 
it is good and right to do. It is truly right and proper at all times and places that we give our thanks to you, Lord, Holy Father Almighty, ever-living Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord Almighty, heaven and earth. he was betrayed our Lord took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which I give to you do this in remembrance of me again after the supper Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all saying this is the new covenant of my blood given for you and for everyone so that sins can be forgiven do this in remembrance of me. And now with confidence and with trust, we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as our communion assistants come forward. Everyone is welcome to communion. We practice open communion, and we offer juice and gluten-free as well.
Christ, O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Christ, Christ O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, give us your O Lamb of God, you break the chains of hatred and fear, have mercy on us. Christ, O Lamb of God, who takes away sin of the world, give us your peace. Christ, O Lamb of God, you are the way of justice and peace. Have mercy on us. Christ, O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, give us your peace. Christ, O Lamb of God, you are the way of mercy and love. Have mercy on us. Christ, O Lamb of God, who takes away sin of the world, give us your peace. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord. Thank you. 
the Lord be with you. And with you too. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you How's everybody doing today? Well, I'm stiff. It was a wonderful day yesterday. I got a second that. It was a phenomenal day. Uh, we had people all over this place, and it was amazing. Uh, I would invite you to, uh, and thank you, and also want to thank the ladies who uh, put on a breakfast for us who were working out there today, uh, yesterday, too. Would, we had breakfast burritos. We had all kinds of good food, and I walked away not hungry. Uh, anyway. Thanks again, and then I would like to invite you to take a walk around the campus when you get a chance. Take a look. It's amazing what's happened yesterday. But I also want you to focus on some of the things that are on an ongoing basis. Kyra Petrum is here almost every day. You look at the flowers, look at the flower beds, look at the care and love that she puts into this, this church, and just say thank you to her. It's really a, a work of art, a work of love. Thank you, Kyra. I don't know quite where to start here because we have an action-packed week coming up and the countdown begins toward the ordination, we've been, the day we've been waiting for for a long time. So this week will be full of activity, getting ready for that, uh, followed right after that into VBS. Uh, so it's gonna be a couple, two or three weeks of intense activity here. <laughs> What's new? Oh, yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, please uh, join in. We're looking forward to getting this underway. And then we will probably back off just a little bit and have a nice summer and relax a little bit and have some, some fun. Men's breakfast on the, on the 10th uh, at the marina. And then I'd also like to invite you to the women's breakfast at our house and the phone number's in there, please RSVP so Jean can plan accordingly. And I know that you haven't heard much about the revitalization project, but it's not on hold, we're moving forward. Uh, right now we're in the process of interviewing people who'd like to consider the campus and once we get that done then we can take the next steps so please be patient uh, we are moving forward it just seems like we're not so other than that that's all i have you must i remembered it yeah okay i don't need that mic just uh so next week um after this service because you realize we can't set up for vacation bible school before the ordination it just would look tacky so at 10 o'clock, meet us in Jacobson Hall. That's where it all begins. We're gonna finish up with the leaders, make sure we're all on the same page, give you the details. And then we're gonna decorate until um, however late we need to do that. It'll be a lot going on. We'd love your help if you can give us a hand, 10 o'clock in Jacobson Hall. Uh, we have 42 kids registered. We were gonna cap at 40 and 12 junior leaders. So what is that? 54 children. And, at, and about 20 adults helping. It is a big undertaking. So we're grateful for all of that help, but if you would help us get that ready, we're gonna do a quick turnaround and make this place suddenly tropical in a matter of hours. How? I don't know yet, we'll figure it out. Okay, well I invite you to stand, cause you're gonna stand anyway, if you wish, or you may remain seated for our sending song, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Maybe Jesus will help you up, I don't know. But I invite you to clap, I have no rhythm, so someone else starting it. Ophelia, you're up, clapping. I'm 
I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. Go in peace because Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.